Hello students, today we will discuss about the important muscle of your lateral pelvic wall and that is known as obturator internus. So in this today's video, I will discuss about the obturator internus and we also discuss what is the difference between the obturator fascia and obturator membrane. So let's see this muscle that when you are talking about the obturator internus, it is a fan shaped muscle. So when you will see the shape of this muscle, you can see here in this diagram that it is a broad when you will see its origin part and this muscle will become narrow when it will go posteriorly for the insertion. So this is the fan shaped muscle and this muscle is a muscle which is present in the lateral pelvic wall. So this is a question for your exam that if we are talking about the pelvic wall, which are the muscles present in the lateral wall of the pelvis. So this is one of the muscle and that we are talking about is obturator internus. Now when we will see the origin of this muscle, this muscle arises within the pelvis and the tendon leaves the pelvic cavity through the lesser sciatic foramen. Now this is again an important question and it has been asked in so many times in your exam that when we are talking about the lesser sciatic foramen, you have an important exit from the pelvis and that is the tendon of your obturator internus. So here you can see that here is this is your ischial spine and above the ischial spine you will have the greater sciatic notch and below you will have this lesser sciatic notch. Now this notch converted into the foramen with the help of the ligaments which you can see in this diagram. Here what you are able to appreciate that this is the one ligament and this ligament is connecting the ischial tuberosity to the sacrum. So this is known as sacrotuberous ligament and here you will have this one ligament which is going to the ischial spine. So this is the sacrospinous ligament. Now when you will have these ligament, now you will have one foramen here which is known as greater sciatic foramen and one foramen is here which is known as lesser sciatic foramen. Now through this lesser sciatic foramen, you can see that this muscle tendon is coming out into the gluteal region. So this is an important thing to understand that when we are talking about the origin of obturator internus, it is very deep when you will do the dissection from the posterior side, it is not visible. But the tendon is visible when you remove the gluteus maximus. So once you will remove the gluteus maximus, you can appreciate these two foramen, greater sciatic and lesser sciatic foramen. And through the lesser, lesser sciatic foramen, you can see the exit of this obturator internus tendon. But the origin is not visible because it is arising from the inside of your pelvis. Clear? So what is the exact origin of this muscle? So when you will talk about the origin, it is first taking origin from the inner side of obturator membrane or you can say pelvic surface of obturator membrane. Second thing is it also arises from the adjoining bones surrounding the obturator membrane. So here if you will see the origin, you have to understand that we are seeing from the inside of your pelvis. So this is the inner side of your hip bones and you can see that on the inner side of the hip bone, you can see this is the origin of your this obturator internus. Clear? But if you will remove this obturator internus, you will find one membrane which is closing your obturator foramen and that is your obturator membrane. So the obturator membrane is closing the obturator foramen and on that membrane, you will have the origin of this obturator internus. So, this is the one thing. Second thing is when we will talk about the insertion, the insertion is more important in this relation of the muscle rather than its origin because the obturator internus muscle which we have seen, it is a fan shape origin and converts into a very thin tendon. So posteriorly this muscle form a tendon and that tendon leaves the lesser pelvis and through which foramen? Lesser sciatic foramen. Now it exits through the lesser sciatic foramen and the tendon of obturator internus, it turns almost at right angle at the lesser sciatic notch. So here you can see that this is the origin, this is the insertion. So it is turning and this turn is almost right angle through a groove which passes just below the 
your ischial spine. So below the ischial spine, here you will have a small groove and that groove is nothing but it is an area where this tendon is taking turn which is almost 90 degree. Now then it crosses posterior aspect of your hip joint and ultimately it insert into the femur. Now where on the femur? Medial surface of greater trochanter. So this is again a question for your spotting. Sometimes you have this mark on the medial side of the greater trochanter. Which muscle attached here? Answer is tendon of obturator internus. When you will have the obturator internus, it is supplied by now to obturator internus and this now to obturator internus is a branch of sacral plexus. Now what is the action of obturator internus? So my dear students, you have to understand that this is the origin, this is the insertion and we know that origin is a fixed point, insertion is a mobile point. So when this insertion is stressed or when you will uh, fix this origin and when you will pull this insertion what will happen this femur will go outside that means it will show the lateral rotation of the femur at hip joint so it is a lateral rotator and when we are talking about when your femur is fixed that means when you are in erect posture when you are having the this your foot on the ground so when our foot is on the ground when we are in erect posture at that time what will happen? This origin pulls the insertion. So this head of the femur rotates outside. So femur will show the lateral rotation. Now there is a one more action. Now suppose what will happen that you have the flexion of the thigh. So once you will flex your thigh, now what will happen? Now here is this obturator internus which is coming from inside and inserting on the inner side of this femur. So now when this pull what will happen? Your femur will go outside. It is not lateral rotation now, but it is pulling outside. That means it is going to do the abduction of your femur. So this is again a question that if your uh, limb is on the ground, then it is a lateral rotator. But if your femur is flexed, and once the femur is flexed, it is not on the ground, it is off the ground. And in this flexed position, when this obturator internus will contract, it is again move the femur laterally. But now it is not known as rotation, it is known as abduction. Clear? Hence, second thing is, but obviously because it is supporting the hip joint from the posterior side, so it stabilizes the joint. So, what are the other special features regarding this? Uh, muscle this topic so one I told you is obturator membrane second thing is obturator fascia and the third and very important thing is that on the inner side of obturator fascia you have a very special feature which is known as tendinous arch and this tendinous arch which is a feature of this obturator fascia provide origin to a muscle and that is known as levator ni, which is a very important muscle of pelvic diaphragm. So we'll see all these three features also. So here in this video clip, I will show you what is the difference between the obturator fascia and your obturator uh, membrane. So here you can see this is the anterior view of your pelvis. Now here you know that we are having the obturator foramens. And here you can see that this obturator foramen closed by this white color membrane. So this is your obturator membrane. So obturator membrane is visible here, but it is not visible in the dissection. Why? Because this obturator membrane, outer surface and adjacent margin gives origin to a one more muscle which is present on the outer surface is known as obturator externus. So if you want to see the obturator membrane, theoretically you have to first remove this obturator externus. And after removing the obturator externus muscle, we can see this white membrane is obturator membrane. Now, so this is the one thing which you have to understand that whenever we are talking about the obturator membrane, it is a membrane which closes this obturator foramen. And above this membrane, you can see that this is your obturator groove. Now, if you will go on the inner side, here you can see this is obturator fascia. So fascia on inner side, membrane is on the outer side. Now obturator fascia is covering the obturator internus. 
clear so obturator fascia is not related with obturator externus it is a relation of obturator internus so this is your obturator membrane and this is the important thing if you remove the obturator membrane now you can see the obturator foramen completely now if i will remove this obturator membrane from outer side you can see this is the obturator internus and if you will see from inside this internus is lined by the fascia and if you will remove the obturator internus now you can see this obturator fascia and if you will remove the obturator fascia on both the side now you can see through and through through uh, with these four of ones clear so the important thing is that when we are doing the dissection or when we are talking about this closing of the obturator foramen outer side you will have the obturator uh, externus muscle then you will have obturator membrane then you will have inner side origin of obturator internus and the obturator internus further covered by the obturator fascia so the obturator membrane closes the obturator foramen and it gives to the obturator internus muscle from the pelvic surface that means on the inner surface and it also gives origin to the obturator externus from its outer surface so outside you will have the externus inside you will have the internus and further the internus is covered by the obturator fascia so what is obturator fascia now this fascia is the covering on the pelvic side now this see this is again the important concept and this is the main question that obturator fascia covers the inner side or outer side so obturator fascia always term used in relation to the inner side where it is covering the muscle is known as obturator internus clear now on the obturator fascia we are having a, some modification and that modification is known as tendinous arch and this tendinous arch give rise to the origin of a muscle which is known as levator ani so this is known as white lined or it is known as tendinous arch for the origin of levator ani muscle so this arch or it is a arch shape line which is a thickening on the obturator fascia and where is the fascia present so my dear students you have to keep this thing in mind i told you that fascia is a inner covering of your obturator internus so on the obturator fascia on the medial surface of this you will have the uh, our, this tendinous arch and this tendinous arch give rise to the muscle is known as levator ani so here you can see in this diagram this is the medial side of the your hip bone and here you can see that this is your obturator fascia and on the obturator fascia you can see that this is the area we are talking about and this area give rise to the origin of the muscle named is levator ani now it extend from the body of the pubis to the ischial spine so this is your ischial spine and this is the body of the pubis so this thickening or this line which is known as the tendinous arch it extend from the ischial spine to the pubic bone clear so this concept always in your mind the another thing is that the arch divides the obturator internus into the two half now this is the upper part of the fascia and the obturator internus this is the lower part of the fascia and the obturator internus now you have to understand that when we are talking about the levator ani it is going to form your diaphragm that is known as pelvic diaphragm and you know that this pelvic diaphragm divides the pelvic cavity into the two part the lower part is known as perineum and upper part is known as pelvis so what is happening that the upper part form the lateral wall of the pelvis while the lower part is going to form the part of your ischiorectal fossa and ischiorectal fossa is a component of perineum so this is the important thing that this white line or the thickening on the obturator internus fascia will divide this area into the two part and levator ani when comes here the area above the levator ani become the part of pelvis and the area below the levator ani become the part of perineum and where you will have the presence of ischioanal fossa so in this video clip let's see the orientation so we are uh, rotating this so you can see the medial side on the inner side you can now very well appreciate this uh, covering is known as the fascia on this obturator fascia you can see this band this band is white line now if you will remove you will find obturator internus is there 
So the fascia is the inner covering of obturator internus. Now if you will place the origin of the pelvic diaphragm, you can see that this is the levator ani and this levator ani anteriorly attached to the pubic bone, posteriorly attached to the ischial spine and in this middle area it is attached to this white line or the tendinous arch of your obturator fascia. Clear? So this is what you have to understand and the area above this is known as your pelvic wall and area which is now come below is your perineum where this is going to form the part of ischioanal fossa. Now in this video clip I want to explain you that when you are doing the dissection where will you find the tendon of obturator internus. So you are dissecting from the posterior side in the gluteal region. Now you have removed the skin now you will find this thick muscle is gluteus maximus. Once you will remove the gluteus maximus you will find the other glutei and after that ultimately you will find this area where you will have the two foramen greater and lesser sciatic foramen. From the greater sciatic foramen you can see this very prominent key muscle is pyriformis and sciatic nerve. Now here this is your ischial spine and below the spine you can see that this is the muscle which is taking 90 degree turn and going towards the medial side of the femur. Now dear students this is your tendon of obturator internus and this obturator internus is going with these two gamelas. This is a superior gamelae and this is the inferior gamelae. So when you are dissecting the gluteal region you will find this muscle. Now this is obturator externus. So externus is coming from the outer side of your obturator membrane, internus coming from the inner side of this obturator area and this is further covered by the obturator fascia and this muscle after taking origin making a 90 degree angle on this area and then it insert on the medial surface of the greater trochanter of the femur along with these two superior and inferior gamelae. Clear? So whenever you are dissecting the gluteal region you will find the tendon of obturator internus. So now in this session I hope you are able to understand that obturator internus is a muscle of the lateral pelvic wall but it also contribute into the perineum in the lower part because it is covered by the obturator fascia on the inner side and that obturator fascia is having a thick band is known as white line or the tendinous arch. That arch will give rise to the origin from both the side to a muscle which is known as pelvic diaphragm. So the wall on the lateral side above the levator ni become the wall of your pelvis and below it is become the part of your perineum. Clear? And the second and most important thing is that obturator internus is a lateral rotator but when your foot is on the ground. But if your foot is off the ground and femur is flexed then also it laterally pulls the femur but now it is known as abduction. It is not rotation, it is known as now abduction. So it is causing the lateral rotation when foot is on the ground and it causes abduction when we are having the flexed thigh. So this is all for the session. Thank you.